Welcome to Close Listening. I'm Zach Morgenstern, joined as always by silent co-host Ludwig von B. And today's album is Sky Blue by the legendary Towns Van Zandt. And I say that because if you look up Towns Van Zandt, you're going to see phrases like legendary singer-songwriter. But he's not exactly a famous figure. He seems to have had a very interesting and troubled life where he managed to get himself to the point where he was really well known by various big names in the music scene. And he is perhaps most well known for the song Poncho and Lefty, which was covered by Emmy Lou Harris and then became a super hit in 1983 when Willie Nelson recorded it on a duets album with Merle Haggard. These were people who Towns Van Zandt knew he was involved in that process. So even though he had these great connections, even though he was admired by these very famous people, Towns himself never quite managed to get to their level of fame. And maybe he didn't want to, maybe he had trouble just expressing himself exactly the right way. It's Towns Van Zandt suffered from various mental problems, including bipolar disorder, and when he was a student, his parents were troubled by his conduct, which I believe his girlfriend at the time said she thought it was just normal student drinking behavior, but they basically took him in for some weird therapies, including what's called insulin shock therapy. So I'd heard of like shock shock therapy, which is horrible in its own right, but this is an electric shock. So like I think they over inject you with insulin and it really messed him up. This was a guy who was really admired by some great names in music, but really struggled with drinking throughout his life. He is both super famous and has kind of flown under the radar. I think he's also sort of interesting as part of the sort of legend of Texas, not that I have much relationship to that state, but my understanding is that his family lines go back to some big names in the founding of Texas, but probably some people who were not exactly, you know, hippies in their politics. Let's just say that. I believe his father was a corporate lawyer. So it's, it's it's interesting that Towns Van Zandt came to be part of the scene that he was on. So the album I was able to get my hands on was this one, Sky Blue. This was only released in 2019, so it's recent. So I guess that's why I have it. Though this is well after Towns Van Zandt's death. He died in 1997. And the actual songs are even older. These are all demo tracks uh, recorded in 1973. Uh, quite a few of them were songs that he recorded on his studio albums, and they got to have better production on those. But these are just him and his acoustic guitar, and a couple of these songs have never been heard before. So let's talk about what they are. One of the never-before-heard songs is a song called All I Need. This song is about a kind of vague, unending search for happiness and, I guess, for rest. So a common feature of a lot of what we call folk music is that it's very repetitive. Sometimes you get a lot of similar verses. Uh, and Towns Van Zandt starts us off just like that. So maybe the third stanza of this song raises the stakes a little bit because it talks about romantic loneliness and not just ordinary run-of-the-mill loneliness. But basically, he just has a thought and runs with it, and he makes several verses out of it. So the next song, Rex is Blue, supposedly counts as one of his famous ones. It's about a friend of his, uh, Rex Bell. But yes, yeah, similarly, it's about a sort of meandering search and not being satisfied. I guess when you're writing poetry, you can take two kind of approaches. You can have a vision for the world and try and prescribe it, or you can describe in great poetic detail how hard it is to put things into words, how hard it is to pin down answers. Track three is one of three covers on the album. It's called Hills of Roan County, and it counts as a traditional folk song. It's, it's certainly one of the more haunting songs on the album. Subject-wise, it's about a man unfairly being charged with a murder, and I wonder if it was what influenced the Sting song, later the Johnny Cash song, I Hung My Head. Musically, it also sounds a bit like Bob Dylan's with God on My Side. So it certainly has that haunting theme uh, of the trial in a small old-fashioned town and, and the pains of prison going for it. Uh, but the actual lyrics I found to be a bit wooden. For example, at one point it insists on naming the town where the trial takes place, Kingsport, even though that does not melodically fit into the song. One of the things I've learned over the years as a lyricist is you can't literally say everything you want. It has to come out sounding melodic. It has to flow off your tongue. Track four, we get the title track for this record, another new one, it's called Sky Blue. I guess I would call this the self-aware track on the record because it says you're always singing the same sad song and that's kind of the feel I get with this record. A lot of the tracks melt into each other. This song tries to maybe shake up the sound a little bit. 
uh, as it has some slightly experimental chords in there that don't quite fit into a folk repertoire. But, you know, otherwise it's her what we've heard before. That said, I do think it justifies its place as the title track, again, because of that self-awareness. There's a line that's great. It goes, to me, living is laughing in satisfaction's face. That's quite a grandiose and trying to be confident and upbeat way about saying you're really depressed and lonely. Track number five is another cover. It's called Forever, For Always, For Certain. It's by a friend of Towns Van Zant's named Richard Dobson, who seems to have been another one of these figures who sort of walked in the big musical circles, who had his songs covered by important artists, but never quite got to wealth and fame himself, though he did live a bit of a longer life, so maybe a, a happier figure than Towns Van Sand. That said, this is another cynical song, forever, for always, for certain. Simple, well-written lyrics about how, you know, we can never live up to our grand uh, expectations. That said, maybe it's the optimistic track on this album because there's a line in there about still chasing rainbows. Track number six is called Blue Ridge Mountain Blues, Smoky Version. So this song about life in the Smoky Mountains tries to brighten things up a little bit with yodeling, but lyrically it might be the tra most tragic of it all. In that sort of folk song repetitive format, Towns Van Zant sings about being in various parts of America and how he's not going back there anymore. And the more places he's not going back to, well, you might wonder, okay, is this a suicide song? Track seven on this record is the big one, Poncho and Lefty. So this is a record of demos, so it's just Towns Van Zant playing these songs on his acoustic guitar, and they're very raw. And I had to look this up to make sure, but back when Towns Van Zant actually was making studio albums in the 1970s, there, was a, there were other instruments on the track. He wasn't this sparse minimalist all the time. Uh, but, but even so, uh, there's a marked difference between Towns Van Zant singing Poncho and Lefty uh, here just with his acoustic guitar and the big version from Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard that became a hit in 1983. So without the dramatic production that just sells you on being in this adventure out in the West, here what we're hear more hearing is Towns Van Zant uh, singing about perhaps his own pain and projecting it onto these characters. Uh, his voice sounds so real, it's not grandiose, like Willie Nelson's high voice and Merle Haggard's low voice. It's a human voice passing on advice. And while it can be awkward to listen to this raw version after knowing the epic, very well-produced 1983 version, the brilliance of this composition stands out. You can tell that this is Towns Van Zandt's masterpiece and why, even if you're not crazy about the other songs on here, why this one would have really inspired other singer-songwriters. Uh, it's a combination of using just the right words, uses federales instead of just cops or police to give the song some local flavor and to uh, add some specificity and drama. He creates these big characters in Poncho and Lefty, who we don't know enough about, but we know they had these epic lives and these epic lives that were pitted against each other and just all the, all the very specific word choices. So the way he is giving advice to the person listening to the song says, your breath is as hard as kerosene. What a line. Track number eight is called Snake Song. This is more of a direct concept song. Could be literally about a snake or it could be about Towns Van Zandt or another person who might feel lonely and not like living alone, but also they view being venomous and biting as in their nature. Track number nine is called Silver Ships of Andalar. This feels like it falls into a broader genre of kind of pirates and sailor blues about how, you know, sailing on the sea back in the day was very dangerous. And lots of the time the ship would get destroyed or be the terrible storms or starvation, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know, kind of a long, bleak song didn't do much for me, but it's I could see how it would be fun to write something like this. I also wondered if there was some J.R.R. Tolkien uh, influence in here because he references a place called Valinor. I'm not a big Lord of the Rings guy, but that's apparently in the Lord of the Rings universe. Track number 10 was another standout for me. It's called Mind Spider. So again, these songs are kind of limited because they're just demos, just Towns Van Zant and his acoustic guitar. But this one makes clever use of its minimal instrumentation. Uh, he plays more of these little riffs going down one string instead of chords. And I feel like that creates the image of a spider's long dangly leg, you know, like a string of a guitar. Meaning wise, it's a dreary song about the darkness in one's soul and a warning to not do self-destructive behaviors like drinking because, you know, you have other people who care for you. And finally, track number 11 is Tom Paxton's classic sad, but not too sad breakup song, The Last Thing on My Mind. And it's kind of funny. This is a cover song, but it felt like the fullest arrangement. There was 
probably a second guitar here, maybe even a, a banjo. But yeah, so it's certainly the happiest, brightest place on this record. So overall, it was interesting to look at some of these songs and get the chance to reappreciate Poncho and Lefty and where it came from. But I definitely now want to check out the earlier Towns of Anzan songs with the actual musical production in the background, because I feel like that might help differentiate the songs a little bit, bit more. They won't all run into each other. Because I know sometimes when people are putting together albums, they want it to have a concept. They want everything to be similar. But the problem with that is that ruins the experience of listening to an album. You kind of get bored after a couple tracks. What you, what you want is a range of things. I am Zach Morgenstern. This is Ludwig Von B. See you next time. Mm -hmm.